Looking at the island nation of Mauritius from the sky reveals a quick transition of beautiful sceneries. From the beaches and reefs, to towering mountains and rainforests, to expansive tea farms and wildlife trails, all in a nation measuring just over 2,000 square kilometers. Attracting over 1 million tourists every year, Mauritius hosted the sixth session of the Africa Regional Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction, a meeting that happens every two years to review progress and suggest ways to address risks arising from disasters in the continent. Mauritius is an important venue to host the sixth session of the Africa Regional Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction, not just because of its unbeatable um, tourism facilities, but also because it bears evidence to a changing climate and endangered ecosystems. Just a few meters from the plenary hall, we encounter a beautiful but artificially reinforced beach. Private developers and the government of Mauritius use gabions on a number of beaches to prevent the sand from washing away. Beach erosion is a major problem here, they say, escalating over the past one year. This is only a symptom to an underlying disease. The, coast, uh, the coastal region of Mauritius, our Mauritius, we are nearly protected by coral reefs. If the coral reef dies with the climatic change, the waves come to the beach and hit the, the beach more and more. It takes, instead of bringing sand, it takes the sand away. Our hosts here in Mauritius tell us that uh, when it gets as hot as it is this afternoon, a cup of tea does it. You simply take the tea, you sweat and lose body heat. But what happens to marine ecosystems? How do they handle the heat in these times of global warming and sea level rise? Sea water temperature, they trigger a lot of things. They, are, they, are, they trigger a lot of things. You know, uh, these animals, these creatures that we have in the sea, it is the temperature of the water sometimes guide them what they're supposed to do. So if this temperature of the water rises above what they can't understand, it is going to disturb them. It triggers a lot of things, for example, it can trigger things like when to reproduce, things like this, you understand? So the temperature of water temperature something very important. As seawater gets warmer as a result of increase in average temperature of our planet, it takes up more space. The little expansion of each drop of water, multiplied over the entire depth of the ocean, results in sea level rise. Melting glaciers in the poles also add to the rise of sea level. As the swollen waters hit the coastlines of Mauritius, more sand is washed away. But Beach erosion begins way before the waves hit the shorelines. Many corals will actually die after bleaching, so not all will recover. So uh, if you kill the corals, you kill basically the, 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 the production of the, uh, what will make sand in the end. So that's the first aspect. The second aspect would be, of course, that when you have corals dying, your uh, beach protection is reduced because the waves now are able to go into the lagoon with greater energy and cause erosion of the beach which is already weakened by the fact that you have lost native vegetation and you have constructions along the shore. While beach property owners and the government of Mauritius mean well in reinforcing the wasting beaches, building gabions and seawalls may not be the best solution in light of the resolutions of the sixth session of the Africa Regional Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction we've actually realized that the environment is far from a victim. It provides a number of solutions and including for disaster risk reduction. So if you take this island, if you take Mauritius today, for example, I was listening to a story just last night where, there, where somebody was saying that this island was not hit as bad as it could have been by the tsunami because surrounding the entire island is a coral reef that took the impact of the waves, the bulk of the impact. Now you can imagine the island without the coral reef. Can you imagine how much we would have to invest to build a seawall instead of having the coral reef? 
So perhaps really all we need to do is just look after the coral reef and it will look after us in this case. Like Mauritius, many other African nations have not just climate-related challenges to contend with, but also the opportunity to apply conservation measures as a means of reducing the risk of weather-related disasters. Mm -hmm.